For anyone that hasn't played Halo before, this is the Wraith. It's basically a floating artillery piece turned main battle tank turned anti-aircraft gun turned goblin creature. It's also made by an alien race 500 years from now, so talking about it's going to be interesting. Criticizing the Wraith is going to be a little difficult. I'm not really an expert on things that fly or hover, but with that in mind I'll try my best. As always, I'll start off with the race general stats. The race's official name is the Type 26 Assault Gun Carriage. It weighs 47 metric tons and has a top speed of 43 kilometers per hour. Its main weapon is a 35 cm plasma mortar. Its secondary weapon is a Type 52 plasma cannon. First, let's look at how the Wraith gets around. Hovering tanks are a pretty common trope in sci-fi, and as you can imagine, they have a lot of potential problems. The main problem is that it's going to take a lot of power to lift and propel the tank. And with all that power potential, you can make a track tank that's just as effective. But I actually don't think that the Wraith being a hovering tank is a bad thing. The Wraith was designed to hover so it would stand out more from the Scorpion. And since the Covenant's extremely advanced, I doubt they'd have issue providing power to lift the thing. My problem with the Wraith and hovering is something that would make a lot of sci-fi designs inoperable, and that's inertia. Since the Wraith isn't making contact with the ground, the only thing that's going to push against it is air resistance. And as far as I can tell, the Wraith has no means of braking. It has mechanisms that allow it to lift, yaw, and accelerate, but nothing else. So realistically, the Wraith is going to be sliding around everywhere and crashing into things. Which isn't great considering it weighs 47 metric tons. Another issue is that if it becomes immobilized, it's going to be very difficult to move. The bottom of the hole is completely flat, and has no wheels or tracks to roll on. The only way I can see a disabled Wraith being recovered from the field is if a dropship picked it up. That's not an ideal use of resources. Honestly, the Wraith could be a lot worse when it comes to moving itself. It'd be a lot better if it had reverse thrusters and skids to help it move when it's disabled. Now let's talk about its armament. The Wraith's mortar allows a ball of plasma on a high ballistic arc, which makes sense given that it's an artillery vehicle. What's strange is that the plasma's arc isn't natural. The plasma is magnetically guided along its path, so theoretically the plasma could be guided in any path you want. If they are trying to make the Wraith as effective as possible, they can make it into a sort of plasma missile launcher. Sort of like the plasma torpedoes that Covenant ships use, or the plasma launcher from Halo Reach. The plasma should also be moving a lot faster, but we all know that's for gameplay reasons. If you wanted to make it more like a traditional tank, you could give it a high velocity plasma gun, like the one seen in Covenant AA batteries. Personally, I think that would look really cool, but I don't think it'd be fun to fight against in-game. While we're on the topic of weapons, the gunner's position is absolutely awful. The gunner is way too exposed. And if it weren't bad enough that he's constantly getting burned from the plasma mortar, the mortar is capable of pointing directly at the back of his head. I really hope the Covenant has good life insurance policies, because this guy's gonna need it. Ideally, the gunner should be down in the hole controlling a remote turret. If we can do that now, the Covenant should be able to do it in 500 years. This one's fairly obvious, but your tank shouldn't be able to die just from having a super soldier walk up and punch it in the back. The engine shouldn't be that exposed at all. Another strange thing is that the Wraith looks like it should be able to have shields, but it doesn't. I mean, they have them in Halo Wars, but Halo Wars does take some liberties with things. A lot of liberties. The Wraith's top speed of 43 km an hour seems really off to me as well. Since it's only dealing with air resistance, it should be able to move a lot faster. It might be a safety feature, I don't know. Now this isn't an objective fault, it's more just personal preference, but I think the aesthetics have steadily gotten worse since Halo 1. In Halo 1, the Wraith's cannon looked a lot better, and it looked kind of slim in general. Personally, I think that the Wraith should look like its Halo 1 concept art. But like I said, that's not really an objective design fault, it's just preference. And that's pretty much it. Trying to find faults in the Wraith is a little difficult since I'm not a prophet, I don't know how these things work. But there are some general things you can point to. With this series, I'm trying to stick to Halo vehicles for now, since the media is easy to access and I have a pretty good understanding of the lore behind it. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I'll be taking suggestions for the next one in the comments.